All right, guys, welcome back for another one. The Imp of the Week is something that I'm pretty excited to uh, play around with a little bit. The Orion XTR 2500.1DZ. Pretty excited about this one. All right, shout out to Ronald K. That's how I'll refer to him. Um, and that is his first name and initial for his last name. I just didn't know if he wanted me to mention him or not. But really cool guy. Met with him a few, maybe three or four weeks ago. He actually bought a WA2K from me. We met in person. Um, I've sold more of them that way, by the way. Um, and just a really cool dude. We start talking about amplifiers. He's got a bunch of them you know, eight or 10 amplifiers. And he's got a number of them. He's willing to let me borrow any of them he's got, which was super cool to uh, make videos with and all. And he's, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm interested in most of them, but uh, I picked out a few. And so I met with him again on a later date and got three amplifiers from him. Uh, he's got some really cool old uh, Rockford DSMs. I would love to do some of those, but I'll be honest with you, I'm just, I don't want to blow them up. Uh, Y'all know that I had a Rockford DSM-100 myself that blew uh, old capacitors, just couldn't couldn't handle that thing blew while it was sitting on the bench just idling. Wasn't even doing a, a run on it when it blew, it was just idling. But anyhow, I'd hate for that to happen to somebody else's amplifiers. So this is one of the three that I picked out. And um, if y'all will remember, Big D did this amp several years ago and it did really great numbers. I remember watching it back then thinking, man, I wanna pick one of those up and uh, just never did at all. The only difference is it looks identical to the one that Big D did, but Big D's model was before they started putting the Z on the end here. The rest of it was the same. Uh, this one, by the way, See this end cap right here? There's supposed to be one on this end too. Um, you can see where it, it screws into place, but uh, it's missing. Also missing is the base knob. Now, one of the only differences I know of between Big D's model and this model, when this model came out with the Z, they started giving you a base knob with a clip light and Big D's model did not have a clip light on the base knob. So this is a used amp. I'll be honest, I haven't even hooked it up yet to make sure it turns on and all that. You guys are gonna see that with me. But uh, this model, this exact model is still available on Amazon right now. And this is a pricey amp, guys. This is $384.99. That's a lot um, for an amp these days. But this is a Korean half bridge. And uh, that's where the more expensive amps are coming from Korea and the half bridge models, but they're usually built like a tank. This, this amp is heavy. I ain't gonna lie. And especially for its size, it's a decent size amp, but even for its size, it's very heavy. So I went on Orion's website and printed off uh, the specs for this amp. You'll just have to trust me that this is for this exact amplifier. But up here at the top, you can see the ratings. Uh, four ohms, two ohms, and one ohm. And 1250, 1750, and 2500. Uh, and then they do give it, you see that RMS at two ohms at 0.5, total harmonic distortion plus noise, 3000. All right, so there you see the, uh, Zero gauge, remote turn on is 10, speaker out is four, that's big. And then look here at some of the other uh, the other stuff. So uh, input control, 0.2 volts to six volts, 250 amp fuse recommended. And the supply voltage is nine to 16. 
So we may give this some more voltage uh, once we get to the one ohm run. We'll see, we'll see if it's needed for my bench here. But instead of starting at 14.8 uh, on some of these runs, I'm, I may bump the voltage up a little bit so that we can still, I'd like for it to stop and, and still be in the 14s. I'd say 14.0 or better, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Anyhow guys, um, let's look at these ends. Here's those zeros and yeah, that that is that is four gauge there on the speakers. You only get one positive, one negative. Um, no lights on the end. I think these are lights right here. See these little bitty? I think those must be lights. Like I said, I haven't even turned this thing on yet. And then here's the other end. Hopefully y'all can see that okay. But we've got Tiffany RCAs, um, inputs and outputs. Here's your gain or level. Subsonic, this is different, uh, off and 25. I don't mind that because I often set my subsonic. I think both of my son's vehicles have the subsonic set at 25 right now. Uh, it's a base boost, zero to 18 dB. Um, let's see, it's got a remote, that's interesting. A three and a half remote, three and a half millimeter remote. Here's a low pass. 15 hertz to 250, phase zero to 180. You got a switch here for slave and master, so you can strap this amp. And then over here, a data link. So the controls are mostly the same as what we see these days. Um, but there's a couple of things here that are a little bit different. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this thing wired up. Let's see if she turns on, and then let's get to the good stuff and see what kind of power we can get out of it. All right, guys, here we go. First turn on, three, two, one. I don't even know what we're looking for here. Does it have any? Oh yeah, I do see. There's a light right there, that first one. All right, so this is probably power protect, maybe clip. One of these is probably a clip light. Let's turn it back off and then back on. Ah, okay. That was cool. I didn't notice that right at first, but that's the only lights at all on the amp. Okay, let's finish wiring it up. All right, guys, this is the 4-ohm test, rated 1,250 watts. This is a Class D monoblock, by the way, so this is for subwoofers only. Don't get one of these to put on your door speakers. So all the testing will be at 40 hertz today. Uh, we're starting off at 14.8 volts. It's right there. You saw that toggling. Um, just barely over 14.8. Uh, we're going to capture the current. Here we go. 1250. Are we going to get it? Wow. 1654. The voltage dropped to 14.4 and the current draw was 166.5. Boy, she soared way on past 1250. That's cool. Uh, let's see what it does dynamically. All right, here we go. Dynamic. Wow. Even a little bit more. Still going. 1755. Wow, that's really awesome. All right, let's see what it does at two ohms. Rated 1750, two ohms. What is she gonna do? Oh, come on. Come on. All right, here we go. 1750. What? Guys, <laughs> 2729. The voltage dropped to 14.1. We're definitely gonna have to turn the voltage up for the one ohm test. Uh, she pulled 302.3 amps. Wow, that is wild. Guys, this thing is a beast. It's very underrated on its power. Um, oh yeah, let's do this dynamically. 
Sorry for the phone here, guys. Two ohms burst. Here we go. It's a 10 second run once it starts. Wow. 3129. That is amazing. Is that all she got? Yes, but holy cow, guys. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm impressed. All right, let's get on to the one ohm. All right, guys, here we go. It's the one ohm test. I uh, did turn up the voltage. We're right there toggling between 15.7, 15.8. Um, rated 3,000 watts. No, 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 no. That was if you strap it. Rated 2,500 watts. If you strap this with another amplifier, they're claiming that you can get 3,000 watts out of it, uh, but that's at two ohms. But that's how it works when you strap an amplifier. It's just like bridging, say when you're bridging a two-channel uh, two amp down to one, you can't go to the same uh, impedance if you're bridged. Same thing if you're strapped. You can't go down to one ohm, for example. You go to two. Anyhow, all right, that's another video. But 2,500 watts. What are we going to see out of this girl? Here we go. Wow, 4366, the voltage dropped to 14.1, and the current draw was 574.6. <clears throat> Guys, that is way underrated. 4366, and it was rated 2500. This thing is strong. Let's see what it does dynamically at one ohm. Here we go with the one ohm dynamic test. We still got the voltage right there toggling between 15.79 and 15.80. Uh, this thing put up big numbers on the last test, 43.66. But what's it gonna do dynamic? Here we go. Here we go. Let's get everything going. Unpause the track. Here we go. Wow. 5420, 5433. Wow. This amp is so stout. I mean, um, should we do 0.8 dynamic? Maybe even 0.67 dynamic? Let me think about that. I'm tempted to uh, to drop her on down, but dynamic only. All right, let's uh, let's 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 check into that. All right, here's that point eight. But keep in mind, we are right there at fifteen seven nine fifteen eight zero on our voltage. Can she do the point eight? Unpause the track. Wow. Wow. Wow, guys. This thing is stout. Should we do 0.67? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think maybe we should. All right, here we go. 0.67. Can she beat the 6,400 that she did at 0 0.80? Here we go. Let's unpause the track. Oh, I should have known better. Wow. I guess I just bought me an amplifier. Dang, guys. Ugh. <laughs> oh, God. Ah. Anyhow, this is a good amp, too. I might just have to buy one of these, like a brand new one. Well, I guess we won't be hooking it up to uh, subwoofers. Dang, guys. All right, <laughs> I guess that's it for this one. Um, Ronald, I'll buy this one from you. Guys, thanks for watching. All right, guys, y'all know what that means. We may as well take the plate off of it. I've been chatting back and forth with Ronald. By the way, this thing is still warm 
and I've already ordered Ronald a brand new one on Amazon. They're $415 with tax, by the way. Anyhow, Ronald, I contacted him immediately. He's super cool about it. Um, and I just uh, ordered him a brand new one. He didn't even ask for that. Uh, he said we would work it out some, some other way. And I just took it upon myself to go ahead and order him a brand new one. That's just how I do business, guys. I don't... I'm not going to leave somebody hanging or screwed over or, or in worse shape than before they dealt with me. Uh, it's just how I do business, honestly. Uh, but enough of that. Let's see what this thing looks like. All right. So first off, I'm loving what I'm seeing here as far as the guts goes. Really beefy. These are pretty big uh, caps here. Look at all these transformers. But here's what we're seeing over here on this side. The transistors over here. Looks like every one of them. May, I don't know about this. Yeah, I'm just going to say all the transistors on this side. Those look completely fine right there. Um, anyhow, he and I were chatting about how it was probably either a uh, caps or transistors. That's what it is, guys. This is totally on me. I should not have gone to gone to point six seven. Uh, and to be honest, I'm I'm regretting now going to point eight. What's interesting is, y'all know I rarely ever drop below the ohm load, the lowest ohm load that an amp is rated. I've only done it. <clears throat> I've only done it a few times. I rarely ever do that. Some of the other channels, um, they drop to lower ohm loads uh, a lot, and it's just something that I rarely ever do. But I've had I've had pretty bad luck anytime um, I do that. So I'm probably going to stop. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm probably going to go back to lowest ohm load that the amp is rated, and that's it. No lower, even when we're talking about dynamic. Um, Anyhow, well, that's it. The, uh, oh, also I wanted to mention, Orion has not been super consistent about, I've noticed this on the XTRs and the HCCAs, even Big D's uh, said 2,500 here and then 5,000 here. Some of the XTRs are that way. They kind of give you like a max rating on the amp. And some of them will still say the same. I like that this one just still calls it a 2,500. They don't call it a, a 5,000 on this one. So anyhow, they're not super consistent about that. Some of the XTRs are that way. Some of the HCCAs are that way. I just, I don't know why. But anyhow. All right, guys. Once again, thanks for watching. Got some cool stuff coming up. Make sure you subscribe. And that's it. We'll see you next uh, Sunday.